Did you know that you can get rid of the fisheye effect in your GoPro videos right inside Adobe Premiere Pro? Hey, this is Meredith from vidpromom.com and today I'm gonna cover some of the very basic editing functions that you can find inside Premiere Pro as well as applying the lens correction preset to your GoPro video so that you can get rid of your fisheye effect. Now, Adobe Premiere Pro has a lot of special effects that you can use in your video, but we're gonna cover just the basics today, the things that you would find in just about any video editing software out there and they're the things you kind of have to know how to use if you're going to edit your GoPro videos in Premiere Pro. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have Premiere Pro open here and I'm using the latest version which was just released a few days ago, which is 2015.3, I believe. So um, just take note of that. Make sure that you're always using the latest version of your software. It's always a good thing. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is that I have my workspace here um, kind of customized for how I like to use it. So if you open up Premiere Pro, um, your boxes and your timeline and your preview window here and stuff might be in different places and that's okay. You can actually move them around. Typically your effects panel would be somewhere over here, like something like this. But I like to have my effects over here so that I have my preview window right here in the middle of my screen. Okay, so speaking of effects controls, um, over here on the right, these are the basic effects that you're gonna have with any video that you start creating in Premiere Pro. They're always gonna be there. And then there's a whole long list of all kinds of different effects that you can add to your video. But today we're gonna just talk about the basic controls. And these are similar to what you would find in um, GoPro Studio or iMovie or um, any other kind of basic video editing software. It's just that, you know, as always, they're always in a different spot and they always use different verbiage. So um, the first thing we're gonna look at here is motion. Now, one of the things you might um, do a lot of if you're editing GoPro videos with Premiere Pro is to scale your video because let's say you are your final project is gonna be 1080, so maybe you shot some video at 2.7K or 4K, and you're not gonna export it that big. So with scale, you can kind of zoom in, or sometimes it might be referred to as crop in your frame so that you can um, get a closer look at what is going on in the video. Now, this video here I shot in 1080, so I can't zoom in very far before you're going to notice a, a loss of quality, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So over here we have scale, it's at 100, which is gonna mean 100%. And we can either type in something different, we could type in 120 like that, or um, if you hover your mouse over that 120, you can see I have these arrows to the left and right. So if you click and hold your mouse button down and if you drag it to the left or right then it's going to scale up or down um, for you like that. Now right above that is the position and so this is going to be the position of your video within your frame. So if you're scaled up to 128 like I am you could reposition so let's say I wanted to get more of the fence in there I can I can drag, click and hold that mouse button and drag to the left and right to move my, basically you're moving your X and Y axes here. So um, think back to ninth grade math. It can move left and right or it can move up and down. So this one is gonna be moving left and right. That would be your X axis. And then this one is gonna move up or down. And that would be your Y axis. So let's just say I wanted it to be there. That looks good. Otherwise, it's gonna zoom in, you know, from this very center of your video. It's just gonna zoom in and it's gonna keep the center at the center. You can also, as long as you have this word motion up here selected, or if you double click on your video itself here, you can take and drag your video around however you want or scale it um, however you want. I tend to just use um, the numbers over here and just slide them back and forth until I, you know, I've achieved 
the thing I'm, I'm looking for. Um, but you can um, just click and drag if, if you'd rather edit it that way. Now, there are some things here in the effects controls that I'd never even touch because I just don't need to. One of them would be scale width. I always have uniform scale checked because I don't ever really have a reason to where I need to just, you know, adjust the width like that because then it's totally out of whack. Um, so I always just have uniform scale checked there. I almost never use rotation, but you can use it if you need to. If I did, uh, you know, it would be maybe just a little bit if I had a, like a straight line that was crooked or something. So the anchor point, I almost never mess with that, but what that's going to do is it's going to change where, um, where things rotate from or what the rotation is based off of. So if I put this way over here like that, and then if I just make sure that I bring this up so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then I rotate it. See how it's rotating from where that anchor point is. So it's not rotating from the center. It's rotating from where that anchor point is. I never do anything with the anti-flicker filter. I don't know what that is. Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. Um, opacity. If you wanted to, you could bring down the opacity of your video. If you wanted to overlay two different videos on top of each other, for example. Volume is one that you might want to use. So um, down here on our timeline, you can see that we have the, um, this is the audio track and this up here is the video track. So um, we could we could bring our, our volume down. And let me just show you. Over there. If you hit play on your uh, on your video that is selected here, you can listen to it and adjust your volume however you want. Now, if you're following along with this video and you have Premiere Pro open, you might notice that some of your effects over here have a blue, it's almost like a stopwatch symbol, and some of them don't. Some of them, by default, will will have that um, turned on and some won't. And what it is, is it adds a keyframe for that particular effect. So what the keyframe does is it allows you to Let's say you want to start your video off quiet and then increase volume throughout and then get quiet again at the end. Then you would need to have three keyframes in your video. We'll talk about keyframes probably in a later video. It's a little bit more advanced. So you can see how we're starting off at, the, at a low volume and as it goes along the timeline over here in the effects, um, it, it's going up. It's moving pretty slow because it's kind of a long clip. It's a, it's almost two and a half minutes long. So the reason why I showed you enough just to confuse you is because um, if by chance you adjust the volume and then you adjust it again at another part of your clip, then you're going to have this weird keyframe thing happening and you might not even really realize what's going on. So if you are going to adjust your volume, then just make sure that you have the little um, blue stopwatch symbol deselected. So that means you can adjust this volume anytime you want and it will apply to the whole entire clip. Bear in mind, I only have one clip on my timeline right now. So I only have that one selected. So if you have five clips on your timeline, you would have to adjust the volume level of all of your clips individually. So just to recap, position is literally the position of your video within your frame. Scale is like a zoom in or zoom out effect. Um, rotation is rotation. The anchor point is what the rotation is going to rotate around. And then the volume level, which you'll have to twirl down here uh, under the little triangle, is where you're going to, you can adjust the actual decibels of your uh, audio. Okay, so now that we covered the basic effects and the effect controls, I'm gonna open up the effects panel here because I wanna show you how to 
um, get rid of the lens distortion or the fisheye effect of your GoPro videos. And you can do that right here within Premiere Pro. So in the effects panel here, you have some presets, you have audio effects, audio transitions, video effects, video transitions, what you're gonna wanna do is open up this presets folder and then go to lens distortion removal. And then you have DJI, which is like the company that makes drones, and then you have GoPro. So Premiere Pro has conveniently provided you with some automatic presets to remove your fisheye. Now, you're gonna have to know the settings of your clip in order to select the right preset. If for some reason you're not sure the uh, the image size or resolution of your clip, then you can just open it up in your uh, folder. If you're on a Mac, this is how you do it. If you're on a PC, I'm not really sure how to do it. So as long as your clip is selected, if you hit Command I, it will give you the information about that clip and it tells us that it is a 1920 by 1080. It does not tell us whether it is medium, narrow, super view, or wide. So you would have to know how you shot your um, footage. So I'm not gonna apply this effect to my whole entire clip. I'm just showing you um, how to do it in case you need to do it for yourself. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use a little part of my clip here where you can definitely tell that there's some fisheye happening because this is supposed to be a straight railing and it's definitely not straight. So I'm going to split my clip by, by hitting Command K. I'm gonna split it there and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna split it there so that I am only going to apply this effect to that one little teeny little clip. So let's try medium. I'm gonna drag that effect down there to that clip. You'll have a red bar up here instead of um, the yellow bar. And I'm gonna come up to, under sequence, I'm gonna go to render selection. And this is gonna take a few minutes even though it's just a tiny little clip. Um, think about whether you really need to remove fisheye. In all likelihood, you probably don't. It probably actually adds a little bit of, I don't know, funness and adventure to your video to have the fisheye effect. But if you shot with super view, then you know, it does really distort things like people's faces and things like that. So maybe you do want to remove fisheye, but it's a good idea to kind of edit most of your clips into a movie. So if you're going to trim and cut and piece things together, kind of do that stuff first and then apply this lens distortion preset um, only to the clips that you really need to. That way you're not spending all this time rendering um, with these big unedited clips that you're going to end up um, trimming most of them away anyway. All right, so it's done rendering and I can see that um, what you're looking at now is the uh, the part of the clip that still has that fisheye effect. And then over here, you can see that it's straightened out a little bit more. It's also kind of zoomed in a little bit more because it has to, um, you know, it has to kind of flatten out all of those curved uh, parts of your image. So um, keep that in mind also. So let's watch the whole part of this clip so we can see what it looks like. So um, that is how you will apply that lens correction to remove your fisheye effect. And as you can see, there are um, they have these presets for all of the different GoPro cameras. You will just need to select your resolution and then your field of view. So that's it. Hey, if you want me to shoot you an email anytime that I have a brand new post that has anything to do with editing your GoPro videos or editing videos with Premiere Pro, then head on over to vidpromom.com slash Premiere and hop onto my email list so I can let you know anytime I have something new for you. And of course, you should subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks, bye. Hey, this is Meredith. Of course it is. Of course it's Meredith. Who else would it be? Basic, what's it called? Basic effects. Now a lot of these, now a lot of these effects you are going, now,
Now, uh, thanks. Bye. Bye. Do you ever sneeze right after you put on mascara? I hope I don't have any. I can't edit that out.